Hi, this is Scott. And I'm Michelle, and we are the owners of the Main Street Mouse. And this is the Main Street Mouse Weekly Podcast, show number 153 for July 22nd, 2024. For your safety, remain seated with the doors closed, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside while the tram is moving. And supervise your children. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted mansion. Because this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. So we're in the tower. We are ready for takeoff. Dead men tell no tale. <clears throat> I know not who you are, nor how I came to find you. But may I just say, I. Come on, everybody. Here we go. And it's time to go. It's Monday, and we're back. Monday, Monday, Monday. Monday. Get your tickets now. Monday. Let <laughs> me see. Five dollars. Five dollars. So we are back. Um, I am not in charge this week. No, I, am. I have an outline. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, last week's show was a little off the hinges, and it's because I prefer it that way. But we're back to structure because Scott is actually has his outline and questions and all that mm. good stuff. So I am not in charge this week. <gasps> he just clapped. Te- no, the, the fans were clapping. Uh, all rudeness. All applauding out there in the cyber world. They're applauding. You know what? Some people appreciate the hot mess that I'm not I saying am. they don't appreciate it, but <laughs> it was really hard for even me to follow <laughs> last week, and I'm sitting here. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Somebody back me up out there. I hope you do. I don't hear anybody. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, anyway. Uh, but, yeah, so uh, we are back with a brand new show, and it's structured. <laughs> She says it like it's such a bad thing. Uh, oh, he's putting structure in my life. He's structure. All right. Anyway. Son of a... Never mind. So, how are you doing today? <laughs> how am I doing today? <gasps> oh, goodness. I know you just got done recording for Fox. I did. How'd that um, go? It went well. Uh, I did two segments today. So, and they're going to go at two different times instead of together, like back to back. So... Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. So it's not gonna be one big segment. It's not. Sure. Well, actually, both of them are pretty long. And and what's what's weird is that so I did one about Disney Springs in about flavors of Florida. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the anchor I usually work with, Marlisa, she is on maternity leave now. I don't think she had the baby yet, but she's <laughs> done. There's no reason to not be working then. <laughs> so uh, there's <laughs> another anchor that's filling in, uh-huh. and I'm not we're not, I'm not used to her uh, her, her yet. But okay. I mean, she's really nice. Don't get me wrong. But um, sh- she was you know drag trying to drag out the segment and i was like oh my god i only have so much to talk about um <laughs> where marlisa kind of knows you, you yeah know it was just it, she was together. dragging it out and i'm thinking oh my gosh michelle think like what else can you add to this even though there really isn't anything else so it'll be interesting to see how those segments come out i don't know what the heck i said i always wing it right. so it's like whoa i'll be just as surprised as everybody else to see how they see, come there's, out. No, there's no structure so you just wing it <laughs> as you go so you gotta see how it turns out. Hey, they you. let me run my own segment. <laughs> so, so you showed me a little video you made to put on your social media. Did you post that before? I, I did. So where'd you post it at? On um, my personal page. I didn't put it on the Michelle Atwood page. Facebook or Instagram? Uh, both. Okay, so if you go check out Michelle's Instagram or Facebook, you can see the little video she wrote about getting ready for her <laughs> Fox 35 interview. <laughs> and uh, you'll see how, how... Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, how... <laughs> When you're when you're a reporter and you're getting ready it's from head to toes, you gotta be ready each yeah. and every time you go on live. Or bulldog slippers. Or anyway, you'll have to go. go bulldog look. slippers. Actually, I, th- I put it on a Daydream for Leaving podcast Instagram, and it's on mine. I'll probably share it the, on um, my Michelle Atwood page th- right. tomorrow. But yeah, I, I you know I love I love being honest, and I try really hard to be relatable and just be me. So you know it kind of goes with that whole. See, that's why we don't have video on these because nobody wants to see me sitting here in my bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, let's get going. So, okay, so we're going to start off with Adventures in Florida Living. So last week, uh, we had a mild, ad- somewhat eventful week. I mean, it was really only two days we did something. but It we was had, a busy week. We had two media events in the same day last week, last Tuesday, actually. We um, started the day off. We had to be at Trader Sam's at the Poly um, at, what, 9? We had to be there? 8 9 or 9.30. I can't remember what time it was, but we had to be there for Dole Whip dash <laughs> um because national dole whip day was last thursday right and so two days beforehand they had a dole whip dash you want to explain what dole was dash or you so, want me to do it so um actually you go ahead and explain it okay so 
we got there and there was a handful of media and they had us download this this like gaming app type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like I wouldn't say a scavenger hunt, but they would send you to different locations that had right. Dole Whip. And then you would go up to the location and it would tell you what you had to do at that spot, whether it's take a selfie, take a picture of this or that, just to show that you, you went and, and it kept like a scoreboard. Right. Um, so, but we had to, we had to, we did our first one at the Pineapple and I at the Poly. Mm -hmm. And then we had to leave to go to another an event, which we'll talk about. Right. And then come back and finish. Right. So it was just such a busy day. And... Um, for those of you wondering out there, there is a such thing as too much Dole Whip. <laughs> yes, there is. And it wasn't all the pineapple Dole Whip. It was, we actually had an assortment of flavors that day. Yeah. And then the last thing we had was the, um, with the cake underneath The pineapple it. cake. That was really kind of good, actually. I like that you one. You know, it was good. And I'm not, I'm not a huge Dole Whip person. I know. I like a, a good citrus swirl better. Um, or I like the... But the it uses the Dole Whip ice cream in it, so... Right. And then I like um, the Rapunzel Sunday. It yes. has, like, the lemon and the berry Dole Whip. Right. That's very good. Right. Um, I just, uh, for some... Re okay, follow me for a second. I'm all right? following. So, the pineapple Dole Whip, mind you, it is frozen. Yeah. It doesn't taste cold enough to me. I know that sounds totally crazy. But no, I get it, because, like, orange pop never tastes cold enough to me. I don't know what it is. Something about citrus. It just doesn't ever taste cold enough. I mean, but like when they had the citrus swirl, because it had like the juice base to mm -hmm. it, like that was perfect. That was a perfect snack on mm. a hot day. But the the pineapple Dole Whip, it's like, I feel like it's already getting ready to melt before you even go at it. Well, last Tuesday it was melting before we could even go oh at it. I mean, they were so handing hot. it to you and it was melting out of the window. I know. It's like they hand it to you and within a half a second, it's already dripping all of your hands. Yeah. So um, as you said, we started at the poly at the uh, pineapple. Uh, Lanai. Lanai. Um, so we had our first Dole Whip of the day at like 9.45 <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Dole Whip for breakfast. Um, there. And then as she said, we had to go to another event, but let's skip over that event and we'll just go right back to going back to Disney um, to finish the event. So um, we decided there was, there was uh, we could go to the Epcot, we could go to Magic Kingdom, Contemporary, Animal Kingdom, and Disney Springs. Those were the five locations um, in addition to the Polynesian where we had to go and do challenges, I guess you could say, for lack of a better mm -hmm. way to say it. Um, so when we came back, we decided we were starving when we got back, actually. So we decided we're going to go to the Contemporary because then we could have lunch. And then, yes. do our, and then do our thing. Because they one of the things was at the Contemporary, you had to get the Dole Whip cup cupcake. Cake. Which was, ugh. Well, yeah, yeah. Too sugary. But you had to take a picture of it with the monorail going by inside the Contemporary. Um, yeah, it was just all these little challenges. And then we were sitting there. Now, mind you, we were exhausted. We already did two, you know, events. Mm -hmm. And to finish this one out. And then we're like, okay, let's just go to Magic Kingdom while we're right here. I know Lou showed up and we all kind of convinced each other, like, yeah, we should probably go. I know we all were him and Hans. Should we go? Should we go? And then we went. And then... We were all dull whipped out, so we ended up buying just one and right. sharing like the photos and stuff. And we were trying to rush because the skies were getting ready to open up. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yes. We yes. were rushing to get done because we uh, we literally were in the Magic Kingdom less than an hour. I think it took us longer to get back to our car from the Magic Kingdom than the time we spent in the Magic Kingdom going to three different spots. Probably so, because it, it's you know how it's such a chore getting out of there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was. Uh, it we did beat the rain. Mm -hmm. um, not so much. Well, well, we didn't we? We ended up having to wait at the poly to walk to our car because yes. it was raining really yeah. hard. Yeah, we waited there in the uh, lobby area just until it passed, and it, it lasted about twenty twenty five minutes. Then we were yeah able to get out. And of you there. know what? Sidebar: This rain is really irritating me this week. Well, as we'll get to here, <laughs> you'll you'll realize why Friday was such a bad. Okay, day yeah, we'll bookmark also. that. But I'm just saying, it's like every day, and you know what else bothers me? Oh boy, is the fact that the weather apps here, like, okay, you're gonna go plan out your day, let's say. Right. So you check it before you leave. Oh, no rain today. Like an hour later, you start hearing thunder. Like, are you freaking kidding me? And then you open your app. Oh, look at it change. It says rain. Right. That I think yesterday that happened. Oh we my God. It's here. like, what you can't depend on the weather forecasts here. And you know, and I, I don't, I'm just over it. And Especially for when we're home because Ava hates storms so bad. Right, she freaks out. She freaks out, and it's like a whole situation here. But anyway, stupid rain. Anyway, go ahead. No, <laughs> just the, the rain has been horrendous the last week or two. Um, and like you said, there's just no 
no indication it's going to even rain. Or if it says, oh, it's going to rain today, but not till like 10 o'clock at night, but then it starts raining at 11 a.m. in the morning, and it's like, mm. okay, the, the apps, but it's Florida. It's so Florida. It, basically, once summer hits, you just have to expect rain sometimes. It just seems like a day. lot of Every unpredictable day. rain this year. Friday, which we'll talk about in a minute, was unbelievable rain that we were My out in. My goodness. So that was horrible. So we'll get to that in a minute. So the other event we had that day was the Evermore Resort invited us to come out and see how they're um, decorating and celebrating uh, the holidays. So uh, we saw how they're going to be doing Halloween decorations in the houses and uh, Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas, and New Year's. They, they kind of talked about all four of those holidays. But did you notice, like, so they were they only decorated the porch for Halloween. Everything else yeah, was Christmas. So we didn't get to see what they do for Halloween. But basically, so this resort is, um, they have, like, Airbnb, like, s- big houses, like, nine bedrooms, 11 yeah, bedrooms, um, fancy schmancy type of stuff that's co- it's expensive. Yeah. And um, what they're offering for the holidays is where they will bring you um, your turkey dinner, whatever it is you want, come and decorate it for you. So if you um, clean it up for you, of course, for fees. Um, and they'll do it not just for the holidays, though. You can get that any day you're there. Right. Actually. But they were the way they were trying to sell it, it yeah. was um, if you want to have no hassle right. Christmas dinner um, to where you have a huge place for your family. Right. Uh, they'll do the cooking and cleaning for you. They'll do the decorating for you. So if you if you have a box of money laying around and you don't know what to do with said box of money, this this is an opportunity for you. But if you have a big enough family and you have them all coming and everybody were to chip in, it actually becomes reasonable because what was it? I think the nine bedroom came down to three hundred dollars a night um, per room. So if you if you have enough family or friends or whatever who want to get together and do it, and you can divide it up. It's no different than staying at Art of Animation or something so like that. So wasn't it over 2000 a night? For, for the, the nine bedroom. Well, yeah. Yeah. So divide that. That's only like 250 a per a couple a per room per night, which you pay that staying at a crap resort. Yeah. But if you don't have enough paying adults. Yeah. If you don't have enough, you're in trouble. Yeah. Like if you have a, like a, if you're traveling with kids or whatever, then that bill is on you. Yes. Exactly. Um, I mean, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not even trying to be a hater just because I can't afford it. But it's, it's uh it is definitely a luxury resort. Let's say that. Yes, and they had they had uh, villas that went down to two and four bedroom as well. Um, and I'm not sure what the fee was on that. I didn't see those ones. And then the the cooking and all that, you'd have to look at the menu because it's all based on what you want them to cook. But the the chefs of the resort come to your your house. They cook for you. They bring in servers who serve you. So it's almost yeah. like you're at a restaurant, but you're in a home, not just sitting in a restaurant. And then the way the vice president sold it, he was like. Um, you don't always want everybody coming to your house because then you spend all the time cooking and cleaning just to have the dinner and then it's over. So he said, and he said, but you don't want to go to a restaurant because then you, you're kind of stuck you're at that table and then when you're done, you leave the restaurant and you go back home. He said, this way you can have all the people hanging around for hours on end. Lots of room. Lots of room. Lots of. We had about 50 some people in the room we were in and it did not look like it was no. that many people. There was a movie theater in that house. There was a movie theater in that house. And one of the houses, we didn't see it, but the third story had a uh, slide that went to the second story. Yeah, um, we're talking like like excess. It's, it was... Nice pool, nice swings God, in the back. Just, it I was wish. really nice. Um, but the pool, so we got to see... So they, they, they have the uh, thing called the Conrad Hotel. And this is all Hyatt. I think, or is it Hilton? I can't remember. Hilton. Hilton, okay. Hilton owns all this. Um, they had this humongous pool that almost looks like it's a lagoon. Yeah, it's almost like it seems weird to even call it a pool because right. it's that big. It's like like a big beach, and they had like paddleboard and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, kayaks, I think. Kayaks. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. I mean, when we, so they took us over to the Conrad, and they showed us a presidential suite yes. on the on the sixth floor. Oh boy. But when you got to see that pool from up there, uh, I, it was overwhelming. Like, it was one of those resorts that you could stay at and just eat and drink and swim, yep. and you wouldn't really have to leave. But they do have shuttles to the parks. Right. Every hour on the hour, they have shuttles leaving. But that, that lagoon, I have never seen a pool. Cause that's essentially what it is. It's not, it's not actually an open it's a body of water. Pool. <laughs> it's a huge pool. And I was talking to the one person, and they said the pool has, a, there's only 20 of those pools in the U.S. Oh. that are that size. They self-clean. Nobody has to get in there and clean them. Um, they have some uh, cabanas that are right up on the pool that almost have like the uh, the netting, almost like if you were on one of those boats. Catamarans. A catamaran where you can lay on the, the net right over the water. See, I want to live there. the good life. We just, um, uh. Sandy <laughs> beaches, uh, all that. I mean, it was just, I, I took pictures of it and I go, I looked at my pictures and it goes, no, it looks 
fifty thousand times larger than the pictures even show it. I mean, yeah, the pictures really didn't do it justice. But that presidential suite, actually, mm-hmm. I liked that better than the house for some reason. It was very nice. And I liked all the windows. They had a great view. I mean, just very, very nice. Um, Plus, they were baking fresh cookies in there, so the smell in there was phenomenal. Yeah, I didn't Hot even chocolate. get a whole... I should have grabbed a cookie. I had a bite of yours. should have grabbed 50 of those cookies <laughs> they were good, and they were big cookies. Were I fun. know. We should next time bring Tupperware. <laughs> exactly. It's like me going to the Christmas party. You just stock up with all the cookies. So, But um, no, that... I, I thank them for inviting us out. It was really cool to see it all. We didn't get, they had a media event uh, a couple months back and we weren't able to go because we were in Michigan at the time. Um, but everybody talked about how great this resort is. So if you are looking and you do have the means, um, check out Evermore. Or even if you don't think you have the means, check it out anyway. Just uh, go online, look at the pictures and see what they have to offer because it's really impressive actually what they what they have out there. You know, you got to have goals. Maybe someday. Someday. Maybe <laughs> on a Tuesday we're just going to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're just going to go, and there's like got to be squatter rights somewhere that we could just Yeah, go just to live like the other half, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what? There's so many houses on that property. Would they really notice if we were in one of them? <laughs> Until we ordered food. And then, and that was the other thing I wanted to say about it. So they were waiting outside to go in because they were waiting to do this big grand entrance into the house. Oh, yeah. And they had all this food cooking. And so they had the tables all made up with, I mean, it looked like Thanksgiving Day. They had the big pieces of turkey sliced and they yep. had mashed potatoes and the stuffing and the sweet potatoes and whatever you want for Thanksgiving. It was on a prime Huge rib. Huge spread on the table. Huge spread on the table. And they're like, please don't eat till everybody's gotten their pictures and then we're going to eat. So we're all thinking in our head, like, okay, they're going to let us eat this great thanksgiving day looking food no our food was little tiny samples that was on the counter that and it wasn't even the food that was on the table it was like like uh like one little tiny bite of like they had like a like a turkey cube in Mm -hmm. hummus that was not even a teaspoon big no it was like i'm sitting there i'm looking at the food on the table i'm like i want that big slice of turkey and stuffing right there i don't want that Stuff that, I mean, it was still nice of them to give us anything. But I've never seen such tiny snacks. They yeah. were so small. But don't tease us with the good-looking Thanksgiving turkey dinner. Right? I want the mashed potatoes. I, <laughs> I want the stuffing. The stuffing looked really good. And I've been craving stuffing for like weeks now. So I was like, oh. yeah, and it, Especially for me, like there was stuff you would eat. Like mm. for me, going to media events is always terrible when oh, when yeah. I'm hungry. I know you would eat the stuff on the table. We weren't allowed to eat. You yeah, eat the stuff that all that was. little stuff that had things that I won't eat was like mm. bummer. But anyway, yeah, yeah. but so. anyway, so it it was fun. I, I appreciate them having us out. It was a good event. Um, I was glad to see the resort. And then the whole top off to the the event though the day um as we were leaving the Conrad. Uh, hotel they took us down santa was coming across on a boat and he oh had, yeah i forgot about like hawaiian santa yeah so <laughs> santa in his uh total summer vacation uh mode clothing came out and he gave us all a little little present for being there that day that's how big that pool is santa yeah. took a boat yes, across it he did. to come and give us um yeah yeah present. they had a little powered boat a uh, little boat that him yeah. and another guy and the, all the presents came jutting across the water from one side to the that other was pretty so cool it was really cool so um again check out evermore resorts um in orlando you can see what all they have to offer yeah so the other thing we did last week was do you want to go ahead and tell since it was all your night okay so <laughs> we went on friday night to tampa to see new kids on the block yes now um and I'm going to be talking about this on every podcast I'm on this week. So just get ready. It's going to be repeated. It's going to be repeated. It's so a good thing this is the first one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thursday, I'm probably going to go into another topic because that's what I do. I'll use it as a precursor. There you go. Um, but anyway, so we went to, it was an outdoor like amphitheater to yes. see Nukes on the Block. And they usually do stadium tours. I I have not seen them in an outdoor venue since I was a kid at Pine Knob in Michigan. We saw them at, that's the first place I saw them with you. Was yeah. DTE. Okay, so I guess I wasn't that young. But anyway, it was Michigan. Yeah, it was Michigan. So was they've been doing... Um, but before that... It was when you were a kid. Uh, yeah, because even, even before the one we saw in Michigan, mm-hmm. um, it was at... God, was it the Palace Auburn Hills? This is... A I big never, venue. I didn't see them with you before that, so that was okay, the first yeah, place yeah. I saw. All right, anyway, so I've seen them a ridiculous amount of times, and I'm not even sorry. <laughs> so uh, we, we went, we were able to get lawn... Uh, seats and uh, friends of ours decided to come with mm-hmm. and so we all had hill yeah. and <laughs> we can't even r- call them li- you can't even call them seats because you're on a hill. You're a hill you could rent a lawn chair if you wanted to yes you could or the seats but um we, we ended up getting a couple of them anyway <laughs> Yeah, and there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason. Okay, so we get there. We're all excited. We go. We get a great spot. Great spot. Our spot was excellent, I thought. Great spot on the hill. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better spot. Right. 
like front and center, great. Nobody in front of us. No, it's fantastic. So <laughs> then after we're standing there, then we could hear, hear some like rumbles of thunder. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? And I'm like, oh, but you, it looked bright around us still. It looked you bright. You didn't see any clouds or anything coming into the area yet. No, I'm like, oh, it'll pass. Well, it didn't. No. And it rained and rained and rained and rained. So um, Polly Abdul was an opener um, and DJ Jazzy Jeff. Right. But and we got through his whole set without rain. Yeah. Polly, it rained buckets during Polly Abdul's mm-hmm. full half hour she was on and even after. Yes. Yeah. And so we're trying to put like like uh, I put a shirt on my head, so did Holly, and you and you and Greg just kind of like were whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, I had my Gilligan hat on. You did buy it. You have a Gilligan hat. Um, so <laughs> he's got in his bucket hat. So anyway, so we're standing there getting absolutely soaked. And mm-hmm. normally, I will not stand in the rain. I take cover. Yeah. But we we're in this great spot. We're at a concert. I'm like, oh my. Well, I, what am I gonna do? Right, yeah, it, it, you just can't leave because you spent money to see the closing act, and if you leave at that point, I had a half yeah. a second where I was thinking, okay, this isn't worth it because we were that, and and it was a cold rain. Right, it was very cold rain. Actually. So, um, and then when Paula Abdul was done, I didn't even enjoy her performance because it was like her performance was weird in the first place. Yeah, but then being soaked the whole time and wiping rain out of your face, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, you can't even use your phone if you want to take pictures. I mean, the buttons you can't even hit anything because my phone was wet. doing all kinds of weird stuff yeah. i was tr- i mean it opened apps i didn't even realize i had so yeah it was crazy how much rain i mean we were literally soaked to the bone i mean oh our yes. socks were stretched my shoes oh my shoes were finally squ- dry. making squish noises. yeah it, it was horrible and i mean by the time and it finally did stop raining right before the new kids took the stage mm-hmm. I mean, it had finally but at one point people started leaving the hill and people were saying oh take cover take cover and i guess there was an announcement sent out on a uh, email or something no or okay so this is dumb yeah. I was going to fly out and say it's dumb. So Holly and I went to the bathroom. Yes. And we were trying to hurry back before our new right. kids started. And then we get there, and I'm like, uh, half of the hill is leaving. So then we get up by Scott and Greg, and they're saying, well, they were saying, uh, you know, almost like uh, get off the hill, pass it down. But they didn't make an announcement. Yeah, they didn't make an announcement. So – Way after the fact, way after the fact, way after the, <laughs> like after so the we concert. stood there. We're like, well, I'm not leaving. And where are they going to put people and all this? You know, so we're standing right. there in the, rain. the seating area was filled because of so many people leaving the hill. They went to. Yes. The seats. yes. So then um, someone I know that was there texted me a screenshot of the amphitheater's Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And the Facebook page says, if you are attending the New Kids on the Block concert please uh take shelter or shelter in place and blah 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 now they did not make this announcement at the venue they put it on facebook (laughs) you're you're at a concert where they use microphones and speaker systems to entertain the crowd why could you not just grab the microphone and say if you're up on the hill the only thing i can figure is they didn't want to cause chaos and panic because yeah but you don't be like get off the hill pass it down no but the best part is the best part of the whole thing is Find shelter or shelter in place. We're standing in an open field hill. <laughs> <laughs> in a thunderstorm. <laughs> in a thunder and lightning storm. Lightning hitting all around us. Shelter in place. And I'm sitting there going, Greg, if I sit down, Greg's taller than me. So I won't be the tallest one. <laughs> but we were low enough on the hill to where there was people a lot higher up than us that they would have been. But it was just, it made no sense the no, way they and said then, to do it. And then the even more dumb was that, so they obviously postponed a little bit before New Kids came on. And then when they were getting ready to, then they made an announcement for everybody to get back to their seats. So they made an announcement to go back, but they never made the announcement to leave in the first no, place. They didn't. I mean, come on. Like, it, where's it, common sense? It was. And we found out that they must have postponed something because they actually didn't do a normal encore where they leave the stage and the crowd goes crazy and they come back. No, up. it was they like shorter. That. And even yeah. their opening was shorter than it usually is. Yeah. Usually they drag that out forever for anticipation. I'm like, oh, okay. So it's almost like they they had to crunch some yeah. spots because the show started late. Yeah, it looked like they had to be done and off the stage by 11 because they were really pushing that. And all of a sudden, it was like everything went fast forward. Yeah, they had like five minutes left to go. One time for one more song, and they did like the other song, and then they were done. They didn't even stay out there that long saying goodbye. No, and, and we've been to long. enough shows to where we know that they really drag it out. Yes. Not here. No. So, I mean, the concert was good as usual. I do prefer it indoors. Um, yes, definitely. It, it was they do a better better stage setup indoors. Mm-hmm. They have multiple stages and stuff. But um, on the flip side, I was glad I got to go. Right. Um, my clothes were still wet the next morning. 
Mm-hmm. I, you know, there's always a story when we always. do something. Always. Um, and it's funny. So that night I was miserable. I, I hate being soaked and wearing wet clothes. I mean, hate it. Mm-hmm. So when we finally got home, it was like 1.30 in the morning yeah. and my clothes were still drenched. We had the heat on in the car and I'm sitting in the car. I want to go take a shower. I'm freezing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to walk in that house in air conditioning and it's over for me. I'm just going to be like, it was because we were we were actually so cold. I mean, we were the, <laughs> so now it had it stopped raining before what eight thirty nine o'clock, um, but we were still so. I mean, we we all took off our socks and shoes at one point and rang them out. Um, oh yeah, we were wringing out our clothes. That's how bad it. Greg was. took off his shirt and rang it out. Oh, um, but then they begged him to put it back on. <laughs> um, it, it was just it was just crazy how wet we were for hours on end. And then even even um even the next day my clothes were still wet. So yeah, it was definitely an experience. But it was. yeah. So um this was at the Mid Florida Credit Union Amphitheater. And the one thing I want to say, so we get there, we park, and parking's free at this venue. Yeah. Which I was shocked. You didn't have to pay to park, which is just crazy because usually everybody wants to charge you a fortune. Um but as we're walking from the car to the parking lot, there's this guy sitting in a oh this guy in a uh, chair, like a beach chair, sitting on the side with his trunk, trunk open, open and he's got a drink in his hand. He goes, it all four of us are walking up, he goes, Ladies, I've got beer and wine coolers if you like anything. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, this is the story that ends with it. They never saw her again. I know, <laughs> right? Like he's uh, trying to trying to lure us with wine coolers, and I'm like, "Does anybody drink wine coolers anymore?" I know it's 1982, and this guy's Bartles and James are sitting there with their, with their wine coolers. It was just, it was just funny, and um, but you could just literally, if you didn't have tickets, you could park in the parking lot and listen to the music because it was that loud. Yeah. And you hear it all. So I it don't know. Fun. It was just it was just different, but it was fun. Again, always a story, and it was a fun night. It was fun. I had a really good time. Yes. So let's move on to Disney news. Um, so let's see here. So one thing that did happen last week, uh, Country Bears musical Jamboree did open on the 17th. Yeah. Um, anything happen with that? I know you watch the Twitters and the Facebooks and stuff. <laughs> anything? I know that the they internets. made it. I know they made a big deal. I think the next day because there was smoke coming out of the banjo, but it was supposed to come out of the banjo. So it was so extra it was, smoke, I guess. Yeah. What the problem but was. He's supposed but to be playing it so fast that he makes it. It was big smoke, apparently. Yeah. But anyway, um, so the morning it opened, mm-hmm. uh, there was no line or anything. So they made this big, s- you know, fuss about, mm-hmm. you know, country bears, blah, blah, blah. And there was no line. And I'm wondering if, I don't know. See, I'm a seasoned Disney goer and yeah. I have my favorite things. But country bear jamboree was never a must do for me. Okay. So it's still not. But you know when we went to the grand opening, when the mansion reopened with the Hatbox Ghost, there was no line for that either. It was kind of just. It was kind of busy that morning. Uh, Remember people after we rode it, yeah, when we got back. Yeah, people, people were like were rope dropped it. it and yeah. People were running towards it. But we did. We rope dropped that one. There we was a crowd. Good. This was like nothing. They had nothing. nothing. At all. No, it was like ghost town. Well, and and they made such a big deal over this reopening with the new track and everything. And I get it. It's a classic attraction. It's been there forever. Um, it's in California also. Um, but and people are going to have their opinions. They modernized yeah. it, so and they put a lot of more Disney music, yeah. twists on Disney music into the ride. More IPs. Yeah. yeah, it's always IPs. It tells me Chapek is still in charge somewhere <laughs> because he still put <laughs> IPs in everything. everything. Um, and they did have one original Bear song, but the rest was all. Yeah, just I don't care. We haven't we haven't gone and uh, sat through it yet. Um, We've seen video, and that's good enough for me. Yeah, exactly. We haven't had to rush over there to see it. I mean, I sh- I'm sure eventually we'll go see it and record it, and put it on our YouTube channel. But yeah, I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> Probably not this week. So just stay still. But if you did go and you liked it, great. Um, I I have n- no care either way. I mean, it's, I don't know. If I know you're not like super enthused about any of no, it. No, I'm not enthused. Disney's kind of got me a little bit turned so anyway on to the next topic um they dropped all the shopping news for d23 mm-hmm. coming up is there anything you've seen in there that you're interested in i don't know see whenever we cover events like this especially like out there mm-hmm. um i get so caught up right and i was trying to say i think we talked about this previously that they always make it like this exclusive stuff and it ends up at the outlet yep so it, it, it's i don't i don't honestly don't know if there's anything that's a must have for me plus there's the the um the dream store that they have right. and they don't tell you what's going to be there ahead of time usually cuz right. i know last time they had you know different sections they had like a pixar section and like a princess section and yeah, marvel and stuff yeah like yeah so i mean of course i would like to see what's there Mm-hmm. But um no, 
I did see there was a new baseball jersey, and that's probably the only thing. And that's the only thing I've never seen because they did have the D23 jersey at the last one. Which you bought. Which I did get. Um, and I never saw that after that. So I don't No. Know that was so some of it Expo. some of it is definitely exclusive, but like when they have overstock, it just goes elsewhere. Yeah, a lot of the Marvel stuff that they had because it was so high-priced Marvel stuff, a lot of it ended up back in the parks and then eventually to the outlets. And actually Cast Connection from what we were told. Right. And, and that's the thing. So you spend a lot of money to um, go to D23. Like if you are, I mean, we go as media, but, um, you know, it's, you get very caught up because it's not just, you know, the, the store, like the Mickey's of Glendale or the dream store or whatever. Um, there's all the booths that have merchandise too. So you could really, if you had the money, you could drop a ton of money easily, easily. I mean, and you know, we, when we go, we watch it because, um, I just, I can't get caught up. I know one year when we went in 17, they had a Madame Leota Harvey's bag. Yes. I think that was the only thing you really want. And, and I, I thought it was so cool Mm -hmm. and I did get it. Be- or was it in 19? I thought that was 17. Maybe it was 19. I don't, I don't know. know. One of the, but I still have it. Yeah. And and people were buying these things for to resell. And I have mine. Yeah, that was 17. Because in 19, you got the Haunted Mansion dress that they had. Remember, you were in a panel and you, I had gotten a, to get into the store. And I oh, was yeah. sending you pictures. You're like, oh, the dress. Oh, this. Oh, that. So I was trying to get everything you wanted. Um, I we, don't remember. I'll financially, we were better off in 19 than 17. So. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to figure it out. It was the Harvey's collection, but anyway, um, a lot of people, and that's that's the crappy part. A lot of people go to these events and just buy tons and tons of merchandise, and they go put them on eBay. I would be so mad though. So last the last one in twenty two, they had a Marvel leather jacket, which I really wanted, and I think it was four hundred or three hundred dollars. I can't remember. It was it was really high, and I don't wear jackets. Yeah, no, you don't wear jackets. Ever. But it said Marvel, and that's the only reason I wanted it. But I'm so glad I didn't buy it because then it ended up at Cast Connection for like thirty five bucks. See, that's crazy. It's uh, you just have to decide. I mean, not you take your chances because not everything is going to go to the right. discount places. Um, it comes down to, do you have, I mean, is it that thing you have to have it because if you don't ever see it again, you're going to regret not getting it, which I think I ended up doing at Disneyland because that's when they first dropped those, uh, Star Wars figures in that box. Oh yeah. And they were out there and you're like, well, you sure they don't have them at Walt Disney World because you get your 20% off there mm-hmm. for being a pass holder. And I'm like, I haven't seen them. You're like, okay. And I bought them and then we got home and like two months later they were at Disney World. So it was like, I should have waited to save 20%, but it is what it is. Yeah, I know. I, I really, I like a good sale. I mean, I'm really cheap when it comes to like, I don't like paying full price for anything. <laughs> so when you go out there, it's like, oh, do and I, I need wish, it? And that's what they should do because I know they always offer the chase discount at a lot of those things mm-hmm. um, and some D23 discounts depending on the booth but it's like if you're a pass holder at disneyland or disney world you should offer something for those people if you can prove that you're a pass holder an active pass holder give you a discount something even 10 percent is something you um, know anything but that, especially yeah. nowadays so yeah it's i i guess moral of the story i didn't see anything that was a must-have okay um but i know they're going to have more stuff on the floor too so definitely um, also news that came out last week was Disneyland Paris set a Guinness World Record for their drone show. Yes. Yeah, so what was that? Did you I saw a video of the uh drone show and it's it's quite um grand. Very elaborate. I think it, it says here there's so the one at Disney Springs is I think eight hundred drones and that one at Disney Springs, which is phenomenal. This one is fifteen hundred and seventy one drones. Yeah. To make up their show, um, which is just crazy, but it really comes to life in the air. It's like the electrical parade comes to life in the in the air. With the drones. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, I was actually talking about drones on my on my Fox News segment today because um, we were talking about Disney Springs and we were trying to kill time and space uh-huh. uh, about drones and how I hope that they maybe do it for Christmas time here. But if you think about it, if you look at other parks, whether it's Paris, Disneyland, you know, wherever, they really utilize drones a yes, lot. They do. And um I think that that it would be a nice addition to do it here more as also. Yeah, I think there's some law. I think it's U.S. laws that is the reason they don't do it more yet. Um, but I think they're working on that because some of the drones can't be flown over or even take off from a spot where people can walk under that area in case they fall. 
um, where other countries maybe not have this tight of laws as that as they're here. But hopefully Disney figures out a way to do it here so that way we can enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, make, it at, if they can make it bigger, that would be cool. Because they did it at IAPA this past year, and everybody kept talking about the great drone show they showed at IAPA. And I know Universal's added drones to their show. It's not a full drone show, but they've, but they added, have it. they've added them to so which we still have to go see that yeah, I know. Um, one of these nights. Um, another blog that dropped today was um, new Halloween merchandise drop. Oh, yes. So, yeah, I put that out this morning, and actually it, it hit the Disney. Disney store online. Um, usually, I remember it used to be har- harder to get the Halloween stuff, or you'd have to wait for it to hit the parks. And I'd always get messages from people: "Is it going to be on Shop Disney? Is it, you know, because it was Shop Disney before?" And people would always ask me, "When's it going to be online? When's it going to be online?" Well, it's not even August yet, and everything is there. Yeah, so. So it's almost like they want you to buy it so you can wear it. So when you do come for Halloween time, you already have the. Or maybe, you know what else it could be, too, is uh, maybe to keep the frenzy out of, uh, down a little bit yes. from where um, the, uh, usually there's a there's a crowd to get the merchandise. Right. Well, that, and it'll do that. And it also hurts the shoppers. So oh, the, yeah, the eBayers kind of get, get knocked down because yeah. people can buy it online. The only thing the only thing that makes me mad about the Disney store online is you can't use your AP discount. No, you can't. But sometimes they offer deals shopping the Disney store online um, yeah. that we don't get as an AP. At, I mean, sometimes their prices actually can be cheaper in the Disney online store than they are in the parks. Yeah, and then sometimes it's the opposite because yes. that, um, for just for example, uh, the last, not the newest one, but the one before the uh, Lily Pulitzer collection yes. was 40% off plus the 20% if you're a pass holder in right. the parks, but it was still regular price online. And then they then they put it on sale for like, um, like 20% off yeah. or something, and it's like, no. Yeah, they're always juggling the prices, and I think some of that does have to do with the shoppers. They don't want the shoppers to be able to. But then again, sometimes they don't care. They, they see don't. people walk in there and walk out with ten bags of stuff. Yeah, so I'm not really. Don't I don't know what they're doing. But anyway, moral of the story is this stuff is already online. I don't think they know what they're doing. Sometimes. Maybe not. I mean, honestly. So another story I saw, and I didn't know if you really wanted to talk about this or not, but I know you put it out uh, last mm-hmm. week. So mm-hmm. the story. Uh, so one of the people who does the candlelight processional every year. Whoopi Goldberg. Um, very popular with the candlelight processional. She's also a huge Haunted Mansion fan. You always see videos of her at the park. She's dressed as a maid at the Haunted Mansion, letting people in and such. She put out that she recalls spreading her mother's ashes at Disneyland. Yeah, and it's a small world. This is a big no-no for Disney because <laughs> when they find that out, they have to go in there with like hazmat to clean this stuff out because you're... You're, you're not supposed to do that. You're, you're putting like, your... human remains. Yes. So, all right. So I put this star- story out last last week knowing that people were going to fight. And lo and behold, they did. Yeah. You know, my comment section stresses me out so bad because nobody can even be nice anymore. I mean, seriously, I'm, I'm so disgusted with online. But um, I knew. I knew it was going get, to get gross, and it did. Um, and, okay, here's another thing. You're pushing my buttons here because... I didn't put the article. You did. No, no, my <laughs> buttons are, are pushed because nobody reads. Right. They read a headline and they're like, oh, my God, da, 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 da. did you read it? No. Because and people are arguing stuff in the comments that had nothing to do with what the story was. So here's me getting super annoyed. Right. And I go into the comments and I'd be like, um, so Whoopi Goldberg is promoting her new memoir that's coming out. And this is part uh, excerpt right. from the memoir. Right. It wasn't like Disney put this news out. To no. Let know. It was in her book. That it's just a news story that hit the AP that people started running with. When right, they because you're not supposed to do that. And right. then people are like, uh, banner for life. The, someone needs to let Disney know. Listen, people, if you read the article, then you would know that she told Disney herself after it was all done. Right. Now, I don't know if she did it that day. If she waited a few weeks, I don't know. But if you would have read the article, then you would know what happened. Well, people don't. That's the one thing we've learned is people don't <sighs> read. And everybody wants to know the answers right away without reading anything. They want video, but then they don't want to take the time to watch a video. And then they want a picture, but the picture doesn't tell them enough details. I know. It is Can't so hard wait. to figure out what people want nowadays. With I mean, it used to be we wrote an article. They read the article. It was great. Yeah, and people would actually have a nice, decent conversation in the comments because about what they just read. Now everybody sees a headline, and they just want to fight. I, you know, and it's frustrating for me as a content creator or as a writer or somebody that puts out news, because if I take the time to put something out and put it together, don't fight, read it. Right. It's, exactly. it's, it, it's very frustrating. But the world is such a hot button right now. I know you said your buttons are pushed, a but mess. it is like a stick of dynamite and there's a wick on both sides and both sides are burning. 
and mm-hmm. it's just the whole world is like on edge right now because of everything. There's just way too much going on in the world right now. Way too much. It's like I I told um I told my friend Gina today because she put something on Facebook. I said it's like a really really crappy movie mm-hmm. that new even crappier scenes come out every day. Yeah. So I get it. Everybody's in a bad mood, but you know, and I okay so. Then people are like, well, do you agree that she was allowed to do that? I'm sharing information. I never thought it was a good idea. And I don't I, think she was allowed to. She kind of just did it. it. I mean, she's no. Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, my she God. Listen, 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 listen. So if those who read the article know, but I'm going to tell you. So her and I think her brother had ashes in their hand. They were pretending to sneeze and oh, pff, like they blow sne- it out. They did it the sneaky like, way. come on. Ew. And, and it's like... I just can't imagine sneezing a relative out, but whatever. And so it's like, I, I, it, the whole story was crazy. I don't even know why she wrote about it in the first place, but people ran with it. So no, no, I do not support people putting ashes all over Disney. No. And uh, the whole thing is, okay, so your, your family member wanted their ashes spread out at Disney because it was their favorite place or whatever. But guess what? Eventually that gets all cleaned up. And so now your family member is at the dump. So cast, oh, okay. So right, right. So a cast member actually commented on the post Mm -hmm. and they're like, they're going to get sucked up in a vacuum. Like they're not going to be there. Right. And it's like, people don't grasp that or like, even if they put it in in water, like it gets recycled out. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it's not a good idea. I get why they do that. I don't know why she admitted it, but then people were like, um, well, any normal person would get a lifetime ban, which is true. Yeah. If you get busted, you get caught, you get a lifetime ban. And but of course, she's Whippy Goldberg. She works for Disney. She's an exactly. ABC employee with The View, and she does the Candlelight Processional, and she gives Disney a lot of press. Right. So, of course, she got away with it. But yeah, it was just one of those weird things because I was looking for stuff to, to put out, and I'm like, okay, this is interesting, but I know people are going to fight. And I was right. I'm getting good at this predicting. You are getting pretty good at predicting <laughs> And usually, like, I try to avoid stuff that's... But these days, it could be the easiest, simplest thing, and people are going to fight, well, that's not true, or I like this, and you don't like that. No, 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 no. Who cares? So it's just everything's a risk these days. It but really that is. was a risk. But, it yeah, was. I do not support... No, we're not on the side <laughs> of doing it. And we've known people who've said they were going to do it or they want to do it. And we've always discouraged it when somebody says, like, yeah, I wouldn't do that if I was you. Just for the simple reasons we meant it's going to get cleaned up. They're not going to be there. It's against the rules. If you get caught, it's bad. Disney has cameras. It's like a casino. Disney everywhere. Has cameras everywhere. And when you don't think there's a camera, there's probably 50 of them pointed at you. So to think that you're just going to get away with that. Mm, you probably won't. I mean, I'm sure some have gotten away well, with it. they have, but it doesn't mean you should. It doesn't mean you should. The rules are rules, and we're, we try to follow and the rules. Have so. more respect for the, the, the people who have passed. But Disney did the same thing. They have a real skeleton in the Pirates in Disneyland. Or they had. I don't know if it's still there. Yeah. The, on the, uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Because it was cheaper to buy real skeletons from... A, Isn't it crazy? ...than it was to actually create a skeleton at the time. <laughs> That's kind of gross. It is very gross. So whenever we're out there, I always look for it because I'm morbid like that. I would like to know who it is. <laughs> because... You know, you're going down the, hey, that's Uncle Grandpa, or that's Grandpa John over there in the in the pirate scene. It's like, right. is it really? I mean, you could lie to your kids and tell them it is. So, crazy. Um, yeah. So, anyway, moving on. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so, that's all we had for Disney news, um, unless there was something else you had that I didn't know about. Uh, okay. Not really. So, other attractions, pop culture, and more. So, we only had a few stories for this stuff. Um, let's we'll start with Busch Gardens first. So, uh, their newest ride, Phoenix Rising, did open up um, at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay. Uh, we were supposed to go to a media event for it, but we... Um, they had to cancel the media event because something wasn't ready yet. And then when they rescheduled it, it was for Tuesday when we had the... They the already had two events. <laughs> ...in the Evermore event. Um, so I told them we weren't able to make it, but they did invite us to come out at another time when we were ready to uh, go out there and, and check out the ride. So we're going to go out there in the future. Also at Busch Gardens, they have a brand new festival going on, their Bourbon and Barbecue Festival uh, through September 2nd. So if you're going out to Busch Gardens, um, go check that out. And I think they have bands and such like that, but lots of food, uh, lots of good barbecue food, and they have bourbon all over the place. So go check that bourbon, out. Bourbon, huh? Bourbon, yeah. Uh, Universal, two things for Universal. So their mega movie parade uh, did finally uh, officially completely open. It was in testing. Yeah, it was in like uh, like testing phase yeah. or whatever. So that is now officially opened. Um, and the day, last time I checked, I think it's about six o'clock in the evening that parade goes off. And it's their yeah. biggest parade ever. 
um, that they do, which I, after seeing the Mardi Gras parade, I'm like, how can there be a bigger parade than Mardi Gras parade? It seemed like it was forever. Yeah, they I know. This we is the biggest parade. It out. I, I, and it has like the classic stuff. It has like Jaws and stuff like that. Ghostbusters. Um, yeah. Back to the Future, I think, is represented in it. So I, I definitely want to go see it. And, uh, now, do we know if this is permanent or is it summer or what is it? I'm not sure. I have not heard of it. Because, permanent. you know, at Christmas time, they have the Macy's float. So they bring some of the balloons down from um, the big parade up in uh, New York. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think they they actually have some recycled ones, like the ones that aren't yeah. getting used anymore, like the big stars. Yeah, I think like some. Of them, I think there's only a couple that they bring from the actual parade. But it's kind of cool though, the because we don't get to go to New York, obviously, to see the Macy's obviously. Thanksgiving Day Parade. But so it's kind of cool to see some of the floats, and of course they get Santa down here and everything for that at uh, the holidays time. So it's a fun parade to go see at that time. I really like the holidays at Universal, how they have Grinchmas and they yes. they have the decorations and stuff. I but you know I really like like Christmas at all the theme parks. I mean, SeaWorld does a great job. Disney, of course, has decorations. SeaWorld has the best live show. Yes, they do. They have Christmas a live nativity time. with like real camels and stuff. It is amazing the amount of animals they bring into that theater for that show. I just, I love it every time. Your mom and dad, we took them to see it a few years ago and they both walked out crying. Yeah, it was, so it was quite, it was quite something. Was, so if you're hearing bad <laughs> rain in the back here, we have a storm rolling through right now. So we're going to get, uh, we're going to wind up here really quick. Just before we lose power. Before we lose power uh, again, because we already lost it once. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention to you, and Michelle did mention the holidays, Universal has a phenomenal deal right now for Florida residents. Um, for one ninety nine plus tax, you can get a pass, a two park pass that gives you unlimited visits through December 18th. That's a good deal. That's a really good deal up to the week before Christmas. So Except the only thing, the only bad part is it doesn't include parking. But if you're going with somebody who already has a pass, then that, that settles that. Or you wait till after six and then parking's free, unless it's a HHN night. Yeah, if it's HHN, it's not free. Right. I mean, nothing is... is but if you know anyone. somebody who can dr- who has a pass that's going with you, or if you take an Uber or Lyft and just get dropped off, you don't have to pay for the parking either. Yeah. Um, but it is a great deal. I don't know how long they're going to be offering the deal. I tried to find it on their website. didn't really say when they were going to stop offering it. So, But if you're a Florida resident um, and it's something you want to get, I wouldn't wait because who knows how long it'll no, be. No, because there. it's a pretty cheap deal. Um, and considering everything is so expensive right now, it might be a good time for those that would like to go to the park till the end of the year. So. And it gives you a way to check out Universal. I mean, if you've never had yeah. a pass or whatever or never ever been able to go i mean because that's less than the price of two days to go to the park you get a pass for the end of the till december 18th that's crazy yeah and, um universal is fun so if you haven't gone go check it out it is i don't know if it comes with any discounts or anything like that like annual pass holder mm, probably not if it's going to be that cheap you don't think you're getting extras i don't think you're getting it but you get in the park and that's a big expense you're you get in the park there, so. so and then you're on your own <laughs> and if you know somebody who's a pass holder though then maybe they can help you out with discounts if you they're shopping or some food or whatever maybe you so it depends who you are um so <laughs> it that depends who you are who you are <laughs> certain friends i was or for now um so my last thing is my question for michelle this week um so d23 is coming it is the uh first full weekend of august and two and a half weeks away two and a half weeks um we have no idea what they're going to announce nobody does we we all speculate are they going to talk about this are they going to bring up this information what is something you're hoping though that they they talk to us and not a blue sky idea that they're thinking about what is something you hope they announce um that's been in the rumor mill for some time now um, then we want to hear Josh say during the parks panel. Oh, gosh. You know, I'm not really sure how to answer that okay. because, like, I've been, like, disappointed the past couple times. Uh, because if you think about it, in 19, they had all that cool stuff coming to F. Kyle like Mary Poppins and all that. Yes. And everybody was really jazzed. And they had the whole production at the Odyssey Pavilion. And mm-hmm. wah, wah. Yeah, COVID and we got Guardians. Yeah, we got um, Guardians out of it. And then the the concept art, as opposed to what what actually was um, for like the redoing Epcot in yeah, the back, was totally a bummer. Um, so I'm <laughs> truthfully, I'm not trying to get my hopes up about anything. That way, whatever they give us, okay. But and I know that's a very cynical, uh, you know, point of view. Right. But it's almost like don't get your hopes up, or you won't be, and you won't be disappointed. That's true. Although you might still be though. <laughs> <laughs> because even when you say, I'm not going to get my hopes up, but then you get there and you're like, oh, how did you guys not mention this? Or I think it's going to be heavy Animal Kingdom this year because I do too. they need an overhaul of uh, the Dinorama area. They already tore down the one ride and it's just been sitting there a big I just feel space. like like um, Epcot needs, needs uh, not Epcot, I'm sorry, Animal Kingdom. Epcot, yeah, they're, they're allegedly done. Yeah. But um, Animal Kingdom is like on life support. And we it it, it need, and now mind you, I think the rides that they have are great. Um, as far as if you want to wait in line for them, right? Um, but it needs more. I 
And it bums me out because when before we moved here, you know how much I loved Animal Kingdom. You King, loved though. Animal Kingdom. All you talked about was how great it was. And, and the I, merchandise, and I loved it. And I don't even know why I loved it so much, but I did. And then the longer we lived here, the less and less it was my favorite. But So we moved here, and we, we still went there quite a bit when we moved here. First yeah, we moved did. Here. But then Rivers of Light came up, and we loved Rivers of Light. I and we Rivers went to see that as often as we could. And then Rivers of Light went away. And it's like they built this whole big show area for rivers and it went away and then they brought the balloons um and those oh my god that disaster things. show the kites and flight or kites and whatever it was terrible where all the the characters would crash into yeah, the yeah i thought it was funny the way they would crash oh my god the first time we saw it i think i've talked about this um i was sitting with, with the boys each one on each side and like i think it was a big balloon of blue or it something and he went head first into the stairs and the boys started giggling and they're like Wait, was that supposed to happen? I'm like, I don't know. So then another character like crashed. crashed into the stairs. We were in tears from giggling. We're like, this can't be. Like, is someone gonna pop out and say, just kidding? And yeah. it, and that's what it was. It was a joke. Like, l- come on, Disney. And yeah. it, there was no good way to land them. So crashing. But they the crashed. <laughs> it was terrible. It like head first into the stairs. It was funny. Um, but yeah, sidebar rivers are light. Uh, the music still makes me cry. I thought mm-hmm. it was beautiful. I love the lotus flowers and the and all that. I think that it was a it's a shame that they gave it gave up on it so soon. Yeah, I know. I agree with that one. Um, I really hope we find out. I mean, Epcot. They say it's done. I wish they would tell us if Mary Poppins is ever going to be a possibility because it I was wish. it was a possibility before. And people COVID. were excited. They were excited. So why can't they put that back? In? I know they're saying Epcot's done for oh, now. Oh, but we have Communicore now, Hall, which sucks. <laughs> um. <laughs> cafeteria hall yeah exactly <laughs> i i wish they would just give us mary poppins and then epcot can be done uh, magic kingdom i know they talk about beyond big thunder but i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon i think because of the big expansion going on at disneyland and then we have all the stuff that's going to be happening at um animal kingdom we're assuming i hope um the imagineers aren't gonna have time and then you hear all the people talking about a fifth gate fifth gate is not coming so if people think, i would be shocked i there's no there is no way disney's gonna build a fifth park because they can't guarantee it's gonna bring in more revenue for them because if you're already coming down for a six-day vacation you're not gonna add an extra day for another park you're just gonna take away one of your days for another park which then they don't make any extra money no and people can barely afford a vacation now exactly i, I just don't i don't see it and the park wouldn't open to like 2040 anyway <laughs> I mean, God, I hope I'm still alive. <laughs> so, if because it it takes them a little while to build a park, a little bit, um, a little bit. So I, I don't see a fifth park even being on the radar to be talked about. Now, if we're wrong, we'll admit we're wrong. I'll admit I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. In I this don't one. think and so I've either. I've talked to a lot of our our uh, cohorts who do what we do, and they don't and they think they so agree either. With all of us. So all of us are kind of in the same. Thinking and you notice nobody's it. predicting this year. Everybody's like. We'll see. Because the last time we went, the only thing they talked about last time was uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which just opened. Right. And that was really the only thing that they really gave us last time. Yeah. Uh-uh. No? So, yeah. So so they talked about Tiana's and we got to see, um, you know, the, the, what do you call those things, the model of it and everything. Mm-hmm. But they actually announced that it was going to happen at some point when, oh. when, when it, during the shutdown. Oh, um, okay. That's but, right. But they did have Anika there to sing. Yeah, so they they actually um so they just they talked about it mm-hmm. before. Okay. But then at the last Was it confirmed? It was confirmed, but they didn't they didn't seem like they were rushing and we didn't okay. know when they were going to close it. Gotcha. Okay. So um so last D23 is when they gave all the details. There was the model, there was um it w- they really pushed what it was going to be. Right. Um and it it did, but 2 years later. Um so <laughs> I and, don't know. And a lot's happened since then. I would like to know what they're going to do with the Star Cruiser. Oh, my gosh. Me, too. Because the, you've got this big building that's just sitting there, and there's so many rumors about, well, if they tear it down, they get a tax break. But if they put something in there, then they could turn it in. It's like, what are you going to do with it? Because and You, you know, another, that's building. another thing that's that's a shame. Because, like, that was only open, what, a year and a half, maybe? And the hype was huge. The hype was huge. But, again, you know, I now I'm nobody. So, n- you know, Disney, of course, doesn't care what I say. But as a consumer, as, you know, not as media, but just your regular person, um, I really feel that they need to keep in mind people's finances. Yes. And they overshot with the, with the Star Cruiser. Way too expensive for a yeah. two-day thing. You end up at Hollywood Studios. Like, 
big mistake. And that's the whole thing. So they probably didn't expect the economy to poop out like it did. Um, but even so, even when they announced it, people were like, Who yeah, can I can't afford, afford that? that. Or it's a one and done. It's cheaper to go on a real cruise. It is. Than it is to do the Star Cruiser. And it was. Because of the amount of time you get. Because you only get two, not even full two days. You're only on a ship for like, it's just under two days. Yeah, like, like 44 hours grand. or something like that. Um, I never got to do it. You did it for one night. I don't know, one day. You weren't even on there overnight. You were just no, it was like a eight hours, weren't day, you? And yeah. I hadn't had enough. I was yeah. like, nah. So I never <laughs> even walked onto it. And I honestly, I like Star Wars. But everything I saw about it said, no, I don't really care if I see it or not. I have never left a media event in my entire life where my brain felt completely fried and bogged down. You remember how when mm. I got when I got back? Yeah, because they had us at Coronado's where they put us up. During and the I, I just looked at you and I said, my brain is swirling so bad that I got to put my thoughts together and I don't know how. Right. Because it was, right. you remember that? Because we went down and we sat by the pool because you, you wanted to and record And you recorded something. it because yeah. there was no way I could write that. Right. Um. And and you see, here's the thing. Sidebar before we go, like when you're covering media events, um, especially something that's high end or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, or oh, well, okay, nowadays it doesn't even have to be high end. But back then, a um, couple of years ago, it, they're like, oh, you know, people are ripping on it online of the cost and this and that, and you know, oh, again, just like with Tiana's, oh, you have to say this or you have to say that. No. I didn't like the Star Cruiser, so when I when I spoke about it, I was trying to pull the positive. Right. It was not my cup of tea. Now that it's closed, you know, but I was I was trying to be honest. Because I didn't want my viewers or right. readers to be like, well, you said it was this. I wanted to be right. completely honest, but I did it as a point of somebody who's not a huge Star Wars fan. Mm. So I'm, I'm not sorry it's gone. I'm, I'm sorry that they couldn't make it work some other way. Yeah, I got to believe it. That cost was the biggest thing. And the other thing about it was it never changed. It was the same storyline every time you did. So if you did it once and then you did it six months later, well, it was kind of the same thing. It wasn't anything new. There wasn't like a new a new story to the whole time you were on it. So they needed to have yeah. a, they had, they needed to update it often, I think, to keep people interested and willing to go back to it. I'm just um, shocked they threw in the towel like within a year. Yeah, they quit. There had to be a reason why they quit. And it had to be a financial reason of some sort that they were either losing money on it every month or they they saw a tax break that if they, they hyped they, it up for years. Did. I remember seeing the first model of it. I think it was at the seventeen D twenty three when they announced Galaxy's Edge. I think they showed us a model of what could be coming for the Star Cruiser at the media previews the night before. Um, and then and then at nineteen uh, D twenty three is when they had the big production, right. um, the, the panel, and there was that um imagineer the lady with the blonde hair that was like mm-hmm. she was so like drinking the kool-aid when it comes oh, to yeah, she was yeah. so excited and then she just quit a couple months ago by the way yeah i know so <laughs> star cruiser's gone i'm out peace I'm out. out i don't want anybody <laughs> blaming me for it so um but i feel bad for all those people that did lose their jobs when that closed yeah. i think they did try to yeah. find other spots for them and all that and there was a lot of people who loved it greg loves the star cruiser but he's a huge star wars fan and i think that's what it was i think I think they were they were appealing to the huge Star Wars fans, but once you did it once, did yeah. you really? And if you weren't independently wealthy, you really it's not something I don't think you're going to do again. <laughs> independently wealthy, and then you have people like me who who can't. I'm I am so judgy. Like when we they you know when we got on the sh- quote unquote ship, and you know people are talking to you like you're really in Star Wars or like yeah. you know trying to do the role play. I'm rolling my eyes so bad. I'm like this is really hokey, as my mother would say. <laughs> Wow, how'd you really feel about it? It's hokey. It's a word. Look it up. Um, it was just too much for me. I'm like, oh come on, these are grown adults, like right. you know, talking about the force to you, and I'm like, whatever. Well, yeah, it's the whole <laughs> get in the just get into it and get out the of role your play, head. Yeah, cosplay, the role play, whatever. And it's just not my. It's not your cup of tea. It is not my thing at all. But if you like that sort of thing, it was perfect for you. Yeah, but anyway, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. So you gotta have to find your own now, unfortunately. So. I guess that's it, though, for this week. Do you have anything else you wanted to talk about before I close us out here? I know. I know. I probably should have stopped talking because um, the lightning is so bad. We probably shouldn't be recording anymore. (laughs) Yeah, probably not. So I just wanted to say... um, MEI Mouse Fan Travel, our official travel sponsor of the Main Street Mouse. Check them out with Becky and her team. Uh, you can find the links on our website where you can get a free, no obligation quote. Doesn't cost you a dime to use their services, and they will help you plan every m- minute of your trip. 
um, to make sure you get the most out of your, your money for that trip. Um, so again, if you go out to our, go to the mainstreetmouse.com, you will see banners all over the site. And if you click on any one of those, it'll reroute you to Becky's site. And then you can just put in a little bit of information. Somebody will contact you and they will help you out. And it's no obligation to even get a quote. So go ahead and talk to them and they can help you with everything Disney and outside of Disney. So Royal Caribbean, Universal, whatever you want. Everything. They can help you with everything. So I guess I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to let Michelle close us out. Okay, before I close this out, uh, don't forget to check out Lost Princess Apparel. Um, we have uh, all kinds of cute stuff. If you are going to the parks, we've got new sling bags and swing skirts with pockets and leggings and all kinds of stuff. So lostprincessapparel.com. Um, don't forget that we have two other podcasts that we are on. Wednesday comes out the live podcast show. And then Thursday night is the Daydream Believing podcast, which is mine. And um, I ramble a lot, but it's a good show. So, um, yeah, I guess that's it. So until next time, you guys have a wonderful, safe, happy, if you can, uh, magical week ahead. And we will see you real soon. Our trip around the Magic Kingdom is almost complete. I can't thank you enough for spending part of your day with me. And I hope you've enjoyed your journey as much as I've appreciated being a part of it. Ladies and gentlemen, please gather your belongings, watch your head and step as you exit, and take small children by the hand. On behalf of our entire flight crew, thanks for soaring with us. Now I will raise the safety bar, and a ghost will follow you home. <laughs> Some imagination, huh? <laughs>